Amazing. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker, and this is my darling, darling baby. <laughs> My sweet and sexy lady. <laughs> oh man, I just sorry. I just can't resist it. I'm telling you what. I realize I'm I'm coming to you on Christian television, but I tell you what, this awesome, extraordinary, mighty woman of God. Let me tell you something about her. She is amazing. We've been married over 30, mm, 32 years and counting. And uh, she has been amazing. And one of the things that, that, that I found in this season that's so amazing, every single morning she gets up at, at 6 o'clock. Well, she gets up before 6, but from 6 to 6.30, every morning, Monday through Friday, she prays heaven down. Yes. I, yes, yes. yes. And what's so amazing is, you know, most people have a bad day. I have yet to see her have a bad day in prayer. <laughs> you know, most people flop. One of, you know, I remember when I first became an evangelist back in the day and traveled, uh, I, I hit rock bottom on one of my messages. I mean, I just, boom, you know, flop like big time. And so I've always since then said I'm, I'll never flop because I'm going to depend on God. So I know that she's depending upon God every single morning as she lifts up uh, prayer requests and pray. So we're going to give you a number that you can call in. It's Eastern Standard Time. If you want to prayer, make a prayer request and call in, I'm telling you what, she can get a prayer request to God for you. No, no, no doubt in my mind. Right, right. She can get a prayer request answered. Yeah. But listen, don't touch that down. We have an exciting show for you today. We want to deal with a toxic relationship. Wow. You know, a lot of times people don't wow. realize that they're in a toxic relationship. They don't even realize it. They're, they're, the toxic relationship has just gotten the best of them, and they're just going through the motions, and life is miserable. So I'm going to share with you, we're going to talk about how to distinguish and know when you're in a toxic relationship. That's good. Yes. That's and one, good. Of the, one of the things that you can know about a toxic relationship is they constantly warring against you. This war time. I mean, they wake up in the morning, warm with you. You go to the job, they warm with you. They go, you come to church, and they warm with you. <laughs> you have a toxic relationship yes. when a person is constantly warring with you. I mean, for no reason whatsoever, you have no clue. Just all of a sudden, you find yourself fighting with them. And you're like, what's up with this? What's this all about? Right. Out of the clear blue sky, they war right. with you. That's a toxic relationship. And let me tell you something. It's not healthy. Anything no, toxic not. is poison, and it will kill you. It will kill your spirituality. Yes. It will hinder you from moving into your greatness mm -hmm. and becoming extraordinary and becoming the amazing human being that God called you. Right. And it's, it's difficult if you're trying to live life powerfully. Right. You're trying to live life on purpose, intentional, right. Right. and you got a toxic relationship that's working against you. Because it's like being in a, in a, in a room and, and you're just being smothered by gas, the fumes are just, just toxic and it's, it's just killing you. And it's destroying your life. And any time you have a toxic relationship, you've got to bring that to a closure. You have to. You have to you deal have with to. that toxic relationship. And you know what the sad thing about it is, and we've all been there in a toxic relationship, we think it's going to get better. Yes, we do. Yeah, we think it's going to get yes. it, it won't get better by itself. You have to make some necessary changes because if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. That's true. So you got to make sure that you do something different to turn that toxic relationship That's around right. because it will destroy you true. if you don't destroy it. That's right. That's good. Yeah. Berdella? That's true. Yeah. That's true. What, what I learned about uh, toxic relationships and warring with people, you say, how did it start? They could be controlling. You could say, we're going to go out to dinner. It doesn't have to be a husband and wife. It could be friends. And you go out to dinner. You're ready to order. You want a hamburger. And they want you to order this. And you say, no, but I don't want that. And then they get angry with you because you didn't get it. Then you go home or you're riding in the car, and they're still fighting with you over a hamburger. <laughs> 
But they, they war with you because there's something going on inside of them. Yeah. They're angry with their own life, and, and something has happened. Something has, has, has struck them as a child, and so what they couldn't get or what they couldn't do or how they couldn't act or whatever, then now they're, they're bringing it out. It's an outlet now against everyone who comes in their, their life in a relationship. Yes. And it's, it's just not good. Yeah, that's right, that's yeah. right. Not good. So, so how do we overcome a toxic relationship? Because our you viewers, our, <laughs> <laughs> my darling, darling baby said, run. run. But, 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 <laughs> say if you're married in that situation oh. and 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 you just can't pick up and leave. You can't run because you're married. But yet, it's a toxic relationship. What you have to learn, as in a toxic relationship, you got to teach that person by example. In other words, when they're toxic, let it not bother you. Don't let them get the satisfaction of knowing that it's affecting you. That's the best way to handle it. Because if, they, if it's not going to affect them, they're going to eventually quit because it's not working. So they're not going to continue if it's not working. So once you get to a place where you can handle it yourself, because keep in mind, a toxic relationship, God is using that person to grow you now. Now, don't forget that. All right, I better say that again. In a toxic relationship, God is using that person to grow you because they will reveal the real you. And, but the real you has to be strong enough and powerful enough to not to be affected by the outside. Because it, keep in mind that you have a space inside of you that you can guard and you can protect. And you can keep people from entering and invading that space. That space you can guard, you can put an alarm system on, put some locks on it. Uh, I mean, put a fireproof uh, electric uh, fence or something around it, where if they, they, if they get close to it, they're going to get shocked or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you have to guard that space. You cannot let them evade your space. And once they find out they can't, then they'll settle down. Yeah. But as long as they can push your button and get you to a place where you've been out of shape, then the enemy is using them. We understand that. I mean, because the, the word of God is clear that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Right, yeah. I mean, contrary to what you might think, uh, yeah. your wife is, sir, your wife is not your enemy. I want you to know that. <laughs> you think, man, I can, she's not your enemy, nor is your husband and, and your boss. None of those are your enemy. You think that they are. You think that your children may be your enemy. You think, you think various people are your enemy. No, they're not your enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's demons and devils that are targeting you to discourage you, to keep you from moving into your greatness, to keep you from being an extraordinary, powerful, mighty human being. So you got to take charge over the things that's trying to take charge over you. You got to take authority over the things that's trying to take authority over you. And don't give any place or opportunity for them to discourage you. The joy of God is your strength. You got to keep your joy. You got to stay, stay, stay happy. You got to stay ex excited, ignited, enthused, and infused. Because if the enemy can take your joy, yeah. he can take your goods. Right. So you don't let him take your joy. Smile your way, praise your way through, be excited your, your way through. You just keep going through. Don't let them get to you. Because toxic relationships is out to destroy you. It, and you're uh -huh. constantly warring with them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the things that I, another thing that I know that they'll do is they're condescending. Right. You know, in a, in a relationship that is toxic, they're condescending. Right. They, what they do is they're putting you down. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're coming against you. You can't do nothing right. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, everything you do is wrong. The, the, everything, you, everything you say is wrong. You know, they just constantly, uh, constantly coming against you. That's a toxic relationship. Yes. And, and in this season of your life, you don't need that. You that's need right. people who will encourage right. you. You need right. people that's going to be speaking to your life and tell you uh, that you can succeed, that you can make a difference, that you can uh, achieve and you can soar high. That's the kind of people you need in your life to compliment you, that's right. to make you, that's uh, to make you uh, feel good about you, not to tear you down, that's not right. to come against you. But that's what a toxic relationship will do. It, it will, it's a condescending relationship. It is. You know, it's constant put down, put down, put down, put down, put down. Yeah. 
and it will drive you crazy if you let it. Right. <laughs> right. So you can't let it. That you, There you got to guard yourself, you got to protect yourself, and you got to make sure that you have a good self-esteem, good self-confidence, and uh, good values in yourself because it comes to devalue you. The condescending is to devalue you, to make you feel less than, That's to make true. you feel like you're inadequate, That's to true. make you feel like you can't accomplish, to make you feel like you're a failure. That's what condescending does. It pushes you down. And so, therefore, you have to know God in a way that God builds you up and you know who you are and whose you are and you're strong and you're mighty and you know inside of you is a person who is great and mighty and you're not going to allow anyone to put toxic poison into your life. You refuse to let them have, to have your life. Adela? That's good. That's good. You know, it, unfortunately, that's not discovered before they get together. That's right. Unfortunately, the, the toxic person hides that until they're comfortable and then that's when that monster comes out. <laughs> right, right. They they you, you you get together in a relationship whether it's just platonic friends or whether it's it's man and woman, husband and wife and you're going along dating, doing all that, having the fun, going out to dinner and you know, I really believe when I hear per person say they've changed, really they haven't changed. What they did was they just hid it until such a time they became comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. And then when they get comfortable, then they say, <laughs> now, I, I've watched all their moves. Now I know what they do and what they Snake don't do. Snake in the grave. I <laughs> don't like the way they sit. I don't like the way they breathe. Uncross your legs. You don't eat right. You don't. And you see a lot of that going on. And then when people get get into a, a place where they decide, I can't live with them anymore. Now you've got other things going on. You don't know whether you should leave. You don't know if they're going to, if it's going to be a dangerous uh, parting, if, if they're going to kill you. You don't know if they're going to fight. You have no idea what's going to happen, but it went so far until now there's fear, there's, there's all kinds of things that are going on in your mind and in their mind. And, and as long as they know they can control you, they've got you. It's hard. See, see they break you down when you don't even know you're being break, broken down. Mm -hmm. Because what's going on inside of you, you're saying, I know me, I know who I am. And that's one of the things you have to remember is stay strong in yourself. But right. again, they so sneaky. I don't care if it's a male, I don't care if it's a female, whoever it is, they're so sneaky that they have already set it up and they know when to jump in and catch you at your worst. Mm. They know when to catch you when you're vulnerable. They know when to catch you when you, you're, you're going through something and, and the next thing you know, you're suck, second guessing, oh, maybe I don't look good. Right. Maybe I can't do this and maybe I am dumb. And then you begin to fight back because you, you, you start saying things like he's, he may say, let's use him, for example. He, he may say, you're just dumb. And she's got this bubble thought over here saying, yeah, I am. I was dumb marrying you. <laughs> or she, yeah, or she's the toxic one saying, you're just so lazy. Why don't you go out and get a job or something? And he's got his bubble thought over here saying, well, you know, I didn't have one before we got married. Why do you think I should have one now? So you get all these variables of, of personalities and characters coming out. And it's really sad and dangerous, really, because you don't know what direction it's going to go. Right. But you know that it's not heading in the right direction. So, again, as I said initially, unfortunately, you don't see it before you get in it. Yeah. But, but, if we pray and ask the Lord to show us what's going on, when you begin, the red flags are always coming up. You just yeah. ignore them because you just, you just put those blinders on. I'm so in love. They'll change. Yeah. I know they're, it's going to get better. Oh, he hit me, but it was my fault right. because I said this out of line. Before you know it, oh, my goodness, you have the worst thing going on. Don't, don't ever, when you see a red flag, the first one that you see, that's when you start dealing with it. 
Wonderful. Yes. Yes. You know, the communication is very important. Yes. In a relationship, when it's toxic, believe it or not, you have to develop a type of communication. Mm -hmm. When that person is trying to control you, you have to tell them boldly that, hey, listen, I'm an individual, and you have to respect me, and you have to honor me because of who I am. You have to let them know where you stand. Now, you don't want to be threatening because people have a problem when they're threatened. Mm -hmm. You don't ever want to threaten uh, anyone because when you threaten them, automatically it's going gonna, it's gonna to go sour. Right. You know, if you give a person, I found this out, if you give a person an ultimatum, they're never going to choose it in the best interest of you. <laughs> <laughs> you never. Take it. Never. Take never. They're it. never going to choose in the best interest of you. Yeah. So, therefore... The best way is to communicate with them and to make sure that the person understands you. You know, listen, you are watching by way of television. Let me, let, me, let me speak to you really, really right now. It's very important that you communicate with that person and know that they communicate with you on what words mean to them. Mm -hmm. So you have to find out what does what you're discussing with them, what the words mean to them. Because it can mean something totally different to them and you. Because in the English dictionary, as we all know, you can talk uh, to one another. And next thing you know, both of you confused. Because <laughs> words mean so much, uh, so many different things. So different ways, like, for yeah. instance, uh, in the creation of time, the word cleave means to glue. Okay, when, when the word of God says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave, cleave. and they shall be one flesh. Well, that means glue, like super glue, like God did for our marriage. He glued us together That's with right. super glue. Yeah. But today, cleave means to separate. separate. Go get me a cleaver. I'll use the cleaver. Yeah. So it means to separate today where it changed this whole dynamics of its meaning. Right. So you have yeah. to, in communication mm -hmm. with people, you have to communicate with them on their educational level. Because if you're trying to uh, communicate with them and you got a Ph.D., yeah, well, all of us know that. You know, uh, you know, you got to come down in terms where they can understand and communicate. You can't, you can't, you know, be talking those words that they don't understand. So you got to know what words mean to them. I remember, I remember when, when uh, you know, I, I grew up in Detroit and, and uh, I was a little bad boy back in the day. And my wife never had that type of uh, issues in the streets and, and uh, you know, anything like that whatsoever. She was goody two-shoe and, and uh, you know, she, uh, you know, one of them, one of them perfect ladies, you know, that carried themselves very well, you know. And so, but I was kind of, you know, rough on the edges when, when we, so I talked a little yeah, bit, you know, well. a little slang and a little street. I was still, even though I was saved, well. even though I was saved, I was still talking a little street talk, right? Yeah. So uh, I came in, I came in one day to her and said, hey, honey, look at my shoes. Ain't they bad? She said, what's wrong with them? <laughs> I was like, oh. So, so I used that illustration to get you to see you got to find out what words mean to the person yeah. you're trying to communicate. Because if you don't say this, talk on their language, you'll never be able to reach them where they're at. you got to be able, whatever that individual with a toxic relationship, you got to find words that mean you can't just tell them uh, what you're doing is wrong and you're going to go to hell. They don't want to hear that. Okay. They're not going to listen to that. But you got to say, talk in terms that say something along the lines of, you know, you are dishonoring me. You know what honor means, don't you? Sure, I know what honor means. Well, you dishonor me. Tell me what honor means. Well, honor means when you respect somebody. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know, you have to talk to them in terms. It's, and it sounds elementary, but yet it's effective because you're talking on their language and the words mean the same thing to you as it do to them. That's good. That's good. Fidella? That's good. You have to also ask questions. Think about it this way. You're culturally different. It doesn't matter whether you're of the black race, the white race, the Spanish race, the whatever race, the Indian race. You're culturally different because if, I'm, if I was raised in Chicago, my husband's raised in Detroit, we're raised so different. I didn't know him growing up. In order for me to be culturally 
uh, the same. I would have to live across the street from him and get to know him, and we play and we do whatever. But I was I, ra I was uh, born four hours away and never knew each other till we got older. And so the way I was raised is not the way he was raised. That's right. right. And so you study one another. You watch one another. Right, I good. find it so so admiring to watch uh, people and study them to yeah. see what they're all about. Now, now to to admire them and to watch them doesn't always be pleasant because it's like mm, mm, I'm confused with some of this. So now you've got to go and and figure out. Maybe go into the into the restroom or the bathroom and say. Lord, how are we going to get through this one? Now, I don't, I don't understand this one. I think one of the things is men leaving the toilet seat up. Why do you have to leave the toilet seat up? That's, <laughs> <laughs> and then you got it down. He want to know why you got the toilet seat down. That is a big issue in the house, yeah. especially if you only have one bathroom. Oh, what about this one? The, who, the, the toothpaste. <laughs> Do you do you do you empty the toothpaste from the top or the bottom? Do, do you, you squeeze it do you, do in the middle it? and roll it, or which way does the toilet uh, paper go on the roll? Are you serious? Does it go on the top or does it go? Does it roll from, from the, the out or yeah. does it roll from the bottom? You oh my goodness! You see, when a man put on his his pants, does he put his socks on first or does he put his pants on first? You're like there's so many different things that are out there, and if you don't know how to handle it. Those little petty things yeah. of how uh, the toilet tissue should go on the roll can end up in divorce. Yeah. And not only that, in the workforce, when people having relationships out there in the workforce, not getting along with their perspective mm. of the way they view things and the way they were raised, because you communicate based on your education, mm -hmm. your culture, how you was raised, right. and what words mean to you. That's the way you communicate right. and your belief. Right. That's culture. Culture is your belief. And so you can automatically get in toxic relationships with people because your belief system is different on, on your job. They believe in doing it this way. And you're the boss and you're trying to tell them to do it that way. And then you're arrogant and cocky. So you either do it my way or the highway and that kind of thing. And so now you got a problem. So the point I'm trying to make is that <laughs> communication, uh, mutual respect with one another is vitally key. If you got a toxic relationship, you have to build mutual respect with one another so that you all are, are uh, communicating and able to work out your differences. Right. But when you don't have regards for their feelings, and that's one of the biggest problems that we see in toxic relations, no regards for the people's, for the other person's feelings. You know, insensitive. 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 That's a toxic relationship oh, yeah. where you tell them, well, you know, this, you hurt my feelings. So? You know. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Hey, take it or leave it, baby. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah. Those Grow are up. Terms that you, you, know. Hear. you know, these are no regards oh. for no regards for the person's feelings. And you mm. have to have regards for your whoever for mankind, they're yes. feeling what they're going. Yes. That's called sensitivity, as my That's wife right. alluded to. Mm -hmm. You have to be sensitive to others. You cannot be dogmatic. You can't be arrogant, self-absorbed. You can't have a relationship where it's either my way or the highway. It's all about me, myself, and I. No, you got to have consideration for others. So one of the best ways to have a healthy relationship is to respect one another, Honor one another. Listen to one another. Listen to what your uh, person is telling you. If they got an issue with you, sit down and, for God's sake, <laughs> let them finish talking. <laughs> yeah. that, that is someone who, who thinks they know it all. They got all the answers for you, for them, for the whole world. They're narcissistic. They, it's all about them. Nothing, nothing works unless they're the one that's in control. Nothing works unless they're leading the pack. Mm. Nothing works unless they have the say-so and they're on the soapbox. Those relationships, again, as I said, unfortunately, we've all been involved, whether it's platonic or whether it's, it's a marriage, we've all been involved with somebody or know someone who has been in, been in that type of a relationship where it literally almost destroy you. I know literally almost don't go together, <laughs> but it literally almost destroy you. Yeah. And and you're like, how do I get out of this? How do I fix me? And that's what you need to look at. 
if when you see it that way, don't try to fix the relationship. I, I, I know I'm contradicting right now because what I'm saying is this, that it, if, if it has gotten to a place where it's so volatile that you know someone's going to get hurt, yeah. don't oh. try to fix it. Yeah. If there, fix you. Yeah, if, if there's uh, fighting involved and uh, physical abuse, uh, you need help outside of yourself. Trust yes. me. You cannot deal with that relationship with yourself. You That's need right. help. And sometimes it's the authority. Sometimes you got to get the police involved. And I hate to say that, but that's the fact that you get them involved. Generally, if the police get involved in a domestic uh, violence case, it gets better. Generally, because uh, most of the time it gets it gets better. Uh, but a third a third party has to step in from 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 outside. But here's the deal: what I found in in in, in disrespect and everything, when a person disrespect you in front of others. That's a toxic relationship when they don't have any respect for you in front of others. I mean, they talk to you like a dog in front of others, you know, and embarrass you. That's a toxic relationship if I ever seen one. That's controlling. Yes. Condescending. Yes. Everything that it ought not to be. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you have to work through those relationships. You have to work through, you know, I'm not saying that God can't step in and turn it around. I'm not saying that, that it's not going to work, but I'm saying you have to become proactive and take authority and begin to make some decisions in how to turn that around. It's not, 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 it's not, not going to fix itself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's just not, you know. <laughs> it's not going to fix itself. You know, so often we think things have fixed themselves. If we just ignore them, mm. if we just turn a, yeah. a, 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 our, our head and not look at it, then it'll fix itself. No. Right. As soon as you turn this way and turn back, it's still there. Yeah. So you have to take action. And so in toxic relationships that you have and, and we run into, you know, one of the things you want to do is be at peace with all men. You don't want things to be where they get out of hand, there's physical abuse, and the next thing you know, you all are fighting. Next thing you know, you guys are, 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 are at each other's throat. Uh, and that can be um, husband, wife, that can be uh, son, a daughter, that can be uh, co-workers, the co-workers. I'm talking about relationships, not just marriage, uh, but any relationship with your boss or anyone, you got to build healthy relationships. You do. Very, very you do. important. You it's do. very important. That's good. That's good. Rodella? You know, it, it, it's so sad that the training always comes after the fact. Right. We, we don't go see the psychiatrist, the social worker, the, 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 the help until after we get hurt. Right. We we never That's go so seek counseling because when we're in the relationship, we don't think we need it. Right. When it begins, we don't think we need it. When things, when we first get into a friendship, we don't think we need it. We see it going on, but we never think we need it until it's so bad that you're ready to walk away from everything. That is good. We're going to pick up from yeah. here next okay. week. But listen, it's been an exciting show. I want you to, if you, we are being a blessing to you, if this ministry is being a blessing, we have a sponsor. It's called Good Life. Go to our website, and any donation that you send in, we're going to send you absolutely free a $200 VIP Whoa. club card. Wow. Exclusive hotels and savings worldwide. That's absolutely good. free to you. Wow. So any donation, so go to our website. It's fwccharlotte.com. Make a gift. And any any amount of gift, we're going to send you absolutely free two hundred dollar um, club That's card. Wonderful. One of our sponsors. We're so grateful. That's yes. Good. So listen, this has been a fantastic show. I got to give you the prayer line uh, number right now. We only got about one minute left. So my lovely wife is going to give you the prayer line number to call in Monday through Friday Eastern time and join in with prayer. Give it to them quickly. Okay. For the early risers, it is two one eight. 936-0812, code is 2254-POUND. Give it to him one more time. 
2254 pound. Yes. Well, this has been great. It's yes. been fantastic. Yes. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. This is my awesome wife, Fidella Hall Walker. And we are so excited and united. And we wish God's very best to you.